Hello and welcome to the news in Bahrain International with me, Keith Johnston. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, in the presence of several senior officials at Secure Palace. His Majesty the King gave directives to complete the master plans of new towns to increase the size of urban areas in the Kingdom, provided that the plans conform to the natural situation of those areas and ensure integrated and sustainable mobility, adding that the master plan should include housing, tourism, industrial and logistical projects to create distinctive and competitive investment opportunities. His Majesty lauded Saudi Arabia's initiative announced by the Crown Prince and Prime Minister of Saudi Arabia, His Royal Highness Prince Mohammed bin Salman bin Abdulaziz Al Saud, and the Public Investment Fund's establishment of five regional companies aimed at investing in a number of regional countries, including Bahrain. In this regard, His Majesty the King expressed thanks to the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdulaziz Al Saud, and to the Saudi Crown Prince and Prime Minister for launching the initiative aimed at enhancing the prospects for joint action and strategic partnership, as well as pushing forward the close cooperation between the two countries in its various investment, economic and development aspects, expressing his pride in the deep root fraternal relations between the two kingdoms, their leaderships and their peoples. His Majesty also praised the successful official visit of His Majesty Sultan Haytham bin Tariq of Oman to Bahrain last week, lauding His Majesty's fruitful talks with His Majesty the Sultan, as well as the agreements and memoranda of understanding signed between the two brotherly countries on the sidelines of the visit. His Majesty also highlighted the upcoming historic visit of His Holiness Pope Francis, head of the Catholic Church, and His Eminence the Grand Imam of Al-Azhar and Chairman of the Muslim Council of Elders, Sheikh Dr Ahmed al tayyib to Bahrain at the invitation of His Majesty the King to participate in the Bahrain Forum for Dialogue, East and West, for human coexistence to be held under His Majesty's patronage. His Majesty the King asserted that the major forum would consolidate the prestigious global reputation enjoyed by the Kingdom for its deep-rooted civilizational and human role in fostering human tolerance and coexistence, as well as enhancing dialogue and rapprochement among religions and cultures for the best interests of the entire mankind. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, in the presence of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, received the Jordan Olympic Committee President, International Olympic Committee, IOC's Executive Committee Member, and Olympic Council of Asia, OCA Member, His Royal Highness Prince Faisal bin Al Hussein, who is on a visit to the Kingdom to participate in Gender Equity Seminar, hosted by the Kingdom on October the 30th to the 31st, under the supervision of the Olympic Council of Asia in cooperation with the Bahrain Olympic Committee. His Royal Highness Prince Faisal bin Hussein I conveyed to His Majesty the King a greetings from His Majesty King Abdullah II ibn al Hussein of Jordan, as well as his wishes for more progress to Bahrain and its people. His Majesty requested His Royal Highness Prince Faisal to convey his greetings to the Jordanian monarch, as well as wishes for everlasting progress and prosperity to the brotherly Jordanian people. His Majesty the King welcomed His Royal Highness Prince Faisal and commended his participation in the Gender Equity Seminar, wishing all participants every success in coming up with results that meet the aspiration of IOC and OCA. His Majesty expressed pride in the depth of long-standing distinguished Bahraini-Jordanian relations and keenness to develop them. His Majesty the King commended the efforts exerted by His Majesty King Abdullah II to strengthen bilateral relations praising Jordan's supportive stances towards Bahrain and its people, as well as its remarkable role in enhancing joint Arab action and championing Arab issues. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, accompanied by His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, visited the Jumeirah Gulf of Bahrain Resort, one of the major development projects included in the Kingdom's economic recovery plan and set to be launched on November the 1st. His Royal Highness emphasised the importance of furthering the competitiveness of various economic sectors to contribute to the Kingdom's comprehensive development, led by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. His Royal Highness noted that the collective efforts of Team Bahrain in implementing the initiatives and priorities outlined in the Economic Recovery Plan have promoted economic growth and created a wide range of quality opportunities for Bahraini citizens. His Royal Highness highlighted the importance of ensuring various sectors keep pace with the Kingdom's development goals to further bolster its competitiveness and resilience. 
His Royal Highness emphasised the importance of continuing to strengthen the Kingdom's tourism infrastructure through introducing strategic projects to enhance and broaden the sector's economic contributions. His Royal Highness affirmed that balanced efforts and cooperation between the relevant authorities and agencies were essential for success, creativity and a transformative economy. His Royal Highness noted the importance of major tourism projects, including the Jumeirah Gulf of Bahrain Resort, in supporting the Kingdom's tourism sector and its development goals. His Royal Highness commended the efforts and cooperation of the relevant authorities and agencies in delivering the success of the project. His Royal Highness also extended his gratitude to the Deputy Prime Minister and Minister for Infrastructure, Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, for his continued oversight of the implementation of the project. His Royal Highness commended the continued cooperation between the UAE and Bahrain's private sectors, which is a reflection of the long-standing relations between the two countries and their peoples. The Jumeirah Gulf of Bahrain Resort is owned by the Bahrain Real Estate Development Company, Edma, and the UAE company, Sama Dubai. The resort is located in an area of 712,000 square metres and has a 1.25 kilometre waterfront extending over 52,000 square metres. The resort consists of 207 rooms, two beaches and seven swimming pools. The premises also include a health resort, a lake, artificial islands, and numerous restaurants and cafes and other attractions such as an indoor and outdoor cinemas, a 2,500 person event hall and water parks and games. A number of senior officials were also in attendance. National Security Advisor, Commander of the Royal Guard and Director of the Joint Bahraini Emirati Counterterrorism Exercise at Jalmud III, His Highness Major General Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa inspected the participants of the exercise to ensure their readiness, which includes Royal Guard forces, weapons and units of the Bahrain Defence Force, the Ministry of Interior and the National Intelligence Agency. The Emirati forces lined up in their position with the Bahraini counterparts. <music> 
On the occasion, His Highness Sheikh Nasser highlighted the exercise's objectives and hypotheses. His Highness conveyed to the participating forces the greetings of the Supreme Commander, His Majesty King Hamid bin Isa Al Khalifa, and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, a Deputy Supreme Commander and Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamid Al Khalifa. His Highness praised the distinguished level and high capabilities of the two forces participating in conducting joint exercises and improving their training performance and military capabilities against counter-terrorism operations. His Highness stressed that the march of military and security cooperation is supported by the two countries' leadership to deal with all security threats. He said that the threat of terrorism is no longer confined to a specific country and it has become necessary to prepare against security threats, especially with the growing use of technology in carrying out terrorist attacks, pointing out that training work requires strengthening communication, command and control. His Highness added that the exercise emphasised on the unity of the military principle, concepts and joint procedures between the BDF Royal Guard and UAE Armed Forces Presidential Guard to develop joint work and increasing cohesion and implement various military exercises. His Majesty the King's Representative for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs, Chairman of the Board of Trustees of the Nasser Vocational Training Centre, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, chaired the Centre's Board of Trustees meeting. His Highness affirmed that the centre plays a pivotal role in developing the capabilities of Bahraini youth and qualifying them with skills necessary for the requirements of times and the future aspirations of Bahrain in the fields of industry and technology, which will make Bahrain a leading model in technical and vocational education. His Highness highlighted the efforts of the centre which contribute to creating a new culture of technical education by working on local and international partnerships, expanding its specialisations and providing students with specialised skills and knowledge that keep pace with the requirements of the labour market. The centre's executive director, Dr Abdullah Al Noemi, gave a briefing on the strategic plan 2022-2025 that was approved at the meeting and included the expansion of the centre's activities through ambitious initiatives and projects. The meeting reviewed the centre's achievements for the academic year 2021-2022. to His Highness Sheikh Nasser visited the Industrial Sector Awareness Day exhibition with the participation of leading companies in the industrial and professional sector in Bahrain.
The first Deputy Chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, President of the General Sports Authority and President of Bahrain Olympic Committee, BOC, His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, opened the Gender Equity Seminar in the presence of the Jordan Olympic Committee President, International Olympic Committee IOC's Executive Committee Member and Olympic Council of Asia OCA Member, His Royal Highness Prince Faisal bin Al Hussein and the Acting President of Olympic Council of Asia, Raja Randhya Singh. BOC Vice President His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Ali Al Khalifa, a number of sports leaders and senior officials. On the occasion, His Highness affirmed that hosting a seminar reflects the committee's keenness to actively participate in the Olympic movement and promote its sporting values. His Highness added that the Bahraini woman has received the support of His Majesty the King and Her Royal Highness, the wife of His Majesty the King and President of the Supreme Council for Women, to occupy the highest positions. He added that Bahrain has made great strides in increasing a women's presence in sports work. His Highness stressed that hosting the seminar will contribute to the exchange of expertise and experiences between Asian National Olympic Committees and to identify the latest practices in this field. His Highness thanked the OCA for allowing Bahrain to organise the seminar, praising the role played by the Council in involving women in the decision-making process, wishing success to all the participants. The President of the German International Olympic Committee, Thomas Bach, participated virtually in the seminar where he expressed thanks to OCA, BOC and the Chairperson of the Gender Equity Opportunity Committee at IOC, Sheikh Hayat bin Abdulaziz Al Khalifa, for organising the seminar. The Acting President of OCA praised the role of Sheikh Hayat and noted that the seminar will produce many important recommendations to achieve balance and equal opportunities between genders. Sheikh Hayat delivered a speech in which he praised the support of His Highness as Sheikh Khalid, noting that Bahrain's hosting of this seminar reflects his commitment to promoting gender equity in the field of sports. Under the patronage of the first Deputy Chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, General Sports Authority Chairman and Bahrain Olympic Committee President, His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the first International Arab Scientific Conference, Arab Sports, Between Reality and Ambition, was opened, which was organised by the Bahrain Sports Pioneers Association. The opening ceremony was attended by the Minister of Information Affairs, Dr Ramza bin Abdullah Al Nawami. His Majesty the King's Advisor for Youth and Sports Affairs, a Chairman of Bahrain Sports Pioneers Association, Salah bin Isa bin Hindi Al Manai, the President of the Arab Federation of Sports Pioneers, uh, Dr. Mohammed bin Salman Al Rawashid, and other officials. His Highness Sheikh Khalid hailed the Royal Kerr, accorded by His Majesty the King to the sectors of youth and sports, with the support of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, to turn Bahrain into an oasis of Arab events, in line with the 2030 Bahrain Economic Vision. His Highness praised the role played by His Highness Sheikh Nas bin Hamad Al Khalifa to turn Bahrain into a destination for major events. He stressed the importance of the conference, which aims to shed light on Arab sports achievements in international competitions, mm -hmm commended the efforts of Bahrain Sports Pioneers Association to hold the conference. The chairman of Bahrain Sports Pioneers Association delivered a speech 
in which he praised His Highness's patronage, adding that Bahrain has recorded many achievements by the youth and sports sectors, thanks to the support of His Majesty the King and the government, led by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister. He also expressed pride in the support of His Highness Sheikh Nasser to Bahraini sports. The first Deputy Chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, a President of the General Sports Authority and President of Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, attended the final match of the Bahrain Emirates Handball Super Cup held at Bahrain Handball Federation Hall between the Bahraini Al Najma team and the Emirati Sharjah Club team. The Bahraini Al Najma team won 27 to 24. His Highness Sheikh Khalid congratulated Al Najma team on their victory in the championship which is a form of deep-rooted relations between Bahrain and the United Arab Emirates, which His Majesty the King and the UAE President are keen on developing. His Highness Sheikh Khalid hailed the cooperation between the Bahraini and Emirati Handball Federations and the efforts in holding the championship, highlighting the two teams' competitive level and their high sportsmanship, as well as their outstanding performance. His Highness honoured Al Najma team and reiterated his congratulations to the players and the administrative staff. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr Abdul Latif bin Rashid Al Ziani, participated in the opening session of the meeting of the Council of the League of Arab States at the level of the Foreign Ministers to prepare for the 31st Arab Summit, which will be held in Algeria under the chairmanship of the President of Algeria, Abdul Majid Tabon, on the 1st and 2nd of November. The meeting was chaired by the Algerian Foreign Minister, Ramtin Lamarara, and the presence of the Secretary General of the League of Arab States, Ahmed Abdul Gaith. The meeting discussed the topics to be presented at the summit of the leaders of Arab countries and reviewed draft resolutions to be submitted to leaders, draft resolutions submitted to the Economic and Social Council and reports submitted to the summit, in addition to the report of the Secretary General on the Arab Joint Action. The ministers will also discuss Arab political issues, including the Palestinian issue, the situations in Yemen, Syria, Libya and Somalia, 
food security for Arab countries, as well as the latest regional and international developments and the repercussions on Arab national security. The President of Israel, Isaac Herzog, um, received the Minister of Industry and Commerce, Zaid al Ziani, as part of the visit of Bahraini economic delegation to Israel. The Israeli President discussed with the Minister and his delegation the growing economic relations between the two sides. Al Ziani said that the developments of the relations will promote opportunities for investment cooperation between the two countries with benefits for bilateral trade exchange. The delegation included members of the Bahraini business community. The Minister of Municipality Affairs and Agriculture, Engineer Wailal Mubarak, stated that the building permit system at Benayat issued 1,245 building permits between January and October 2022, which reflects the increase of the issuance of building permits and encouragement of investment projects. Al Mubarak stressed that the Benayat system contributed to accelerating the issuance of licence since its inception highlighting the government's keenness on continuing to attract capital and investments and facilitating the delivery of services to citizens and residents by facilitating the procedures for issuing building permits in various regions of the kingdom. He added that the system is based on an advanced electronic system and a unified guide to building requirements in addition to the participation of the private sector in the licensing process by assigning building permit applications to approved engineering offices. The Minister of Justice, Islamic Affairs and Endowments, Chairman of the Election High Supervisory Committee, Nawaf bin Mohammed Al Mawada, issued Resolution 135 on setting up the polling and counting committees for the election of the members of the Representatives Council. According to the resolution, the committees are responsible for conducting the polling and counting processes according to the revisions stipulated by Decree Law 14 of 2002 regarding the exercise of political rights. The chairman of electoral supervisory committee in each electoral district shall announce the result of the election in all the electoral districts in his area and the number of votes each candidate has obtained after receiving all the polling and counting committee minutes and electoral papers from the various polling and counting committees. A copy of the electoral result along with the electoral records and papers shall be sent to the election high supervisory committee as stipulated in article 18 of the aforementioned decree law to announce the final results and to notify the winners. The Minister of Justice, Islamic Affairs and Endowments also issued resolution 136 for the year 2022 forming the polling and counting committees for the election of members of the municipal councils. According to the resolution, the committees are responsible for conducting the polling and counting processes in accordance with the provisions stipulated in Decree Law 3 of 2022 regarding the system for the election of members of the municipal councils and the chairman of the election supervisory committee for the election of the members of the municipal councils in each electoral district shall announce the result of the election in all the electoral districts of his area and the number of votes each candidate has obtained after receiving all the polling and counting committee minutes and electoral papers from the various polling and counting committees and sending a copy of the election result and all the polling and counting committee minutes and electoral papers to the Minister of Justice, Islamic Affairs and Endowments. The Ambassador of Bahrain to Belgium and the European Union and the Grand Duchy of Luxembourg, Abdullah bin Faisal bin Jabba al Dossari, presented his credentials as Ambassador Extraordinary and Plenipotentiary to the Grand Duchy of Luxembourg, residing in Brussels. He conveyed to Grand Duke Honorary the greetings of His Majesty King Hamid bin Isa al Khalifa and those of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamid al Khalifa, as well as the best wishes to the Duke. He stressed the importance of strengthening the existing strong relations between Bahrain and the Grand Duchy of Luxembourg and continuing joint work in various fields. The Duke expressed pride in the distinguished relations between the Duchy of Luxembourg and Bahrain, stressing the importance of developing cooperation between the two friendly countries in all fields, wishing the Ambassador success in undertaking his duties. His Holiness Pope Francis, Pope of the Catholic Church, received Secretary General of the Muslim Council of Elders, Councillor Mohammed Abd al Salam, in the Vatican. Pope Francis stressed the importance of continuing to promote dialogue between religions and cultures for peace and human coexistence, expressing his appreciation for the role of the Muslim Council of Elders in this regard. 
For his part, the Secretary General of the Muslim Council of Elders expressed the appreciation of the Council and its Chairman, His Eminence, the Grand Sheikh of Al-Azhar Al-Sharif, Dr Ahmed Al-Tayeb, for the efforts of Pope Francis in consolidating brotherhood and coexistence among all, and for always calling for peace. The director of the Holy See Press Office said the visit of His Holiness Pope Francis to Bahrain in November represents a precious step along the path of fraternity and interreligious dialogue. At a press conference at the Holy See Press Office, ahead of the historic trip to the Kingdom on November the 3rd to the 6th, at the invitation of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, Matteo Brunei said Pope Francis will be the first Pope to visit Bahrain. He will attend the closing ceremony of the first ever Bahrain Forum for Dialogue, East and West, for Human Coexistence, which will see around 200 interfaith leaders gathered to promote fraternity. Four meetings of the Pope's seven public encounters on the four-day visit will be with various sanctions of the local Catholic Church, including young people, clergy and religious, and Catholics from neighbouring countries. He noted Bahrain's interest in serving humanity and stressed that an international conference and dialogue among civilizations and cultures was held in Manama in 2014, during which the Declaration of the Kingdom of Bahrain was adopted. The Declaration is an important document that reaffirms respect for human rights and calls for strengthening dialogue, serving peace and promoting pluralism. The Bahrain Tourism and Exhibitions Authority, BTEA, announced the launch of its revamped tourism app, which is aimed at helping tourists, citizens and residents plan their tourism activities in Bahrain. BTEA named the new guide Bahrain and launched it under the slogan, Your Ultimate Guide to Explore Bahrain. It can be downloaded easily from Google Play or the App Store. The app features renowned tourism destinations, it displays entertainment on offer, as well as listing restaurants and hotels. In addition to providing up-to-date information on Bahrain's tourism scene, the app includes a directory of restaurants, hotels and places of interest. The app also has an itinerary feature that helps tourists organise the holiday programme around their interests.